Hi, my name is Matthew, although you may know me by another name. My friends call me Matty, and I should be dead. If you like, you can consider what you're about to hear to be a message from the beyond. My beyond. Yeah, I can't believe it either. I was as shocked as you are when you listen to that message. And that's probably the reason why I'm doing this video here today. I can't say I was the biggest Friends fan ever. I knew the show. I watched it many times. I knew of Matthew Perry. I seen him on the show. I thought he was always the funny one of all the three guys. But the main reason why I watched the show was because of Courtney Cox, even more Jennifer Anderson. I liked her even more. Jennifer Anderson, number one, Courtney Cox, number two. That's the reason why I watched it. But I had a little connection with friends. My friend worked for Martha Kaufman. She's the producer of the show. She was her personal assistant. So I get to hear all those stories on the set. Oh, today Brad Pitt came by. You know, this person came by and I was like, wow, she works with those people. She sees those people every day. So I was always really excited when she tell me stories. The main reason why I'm here today is because of Matthew Langford Perry, AKA Chandler Bing. This is his favorite or his was his favorite place to hang out, the Famosa right here on Santa Monica Boulevard. This is exactly where he was sitting with all his four or five friends all the time drinking one glass of whiskey and whatever they could get. And he actually mentioned it in his book. He said there's a sign, wine by the glass, but they were drinking it by the bottle. That's what he said in his book. There's a picture of Matthew Perry somewhere here in one of those booths is sitting here. Yeah where the stars drink and dine. As you probably can tell already, this is not gonna be a fun vlog, but when I was in Germany on TikTok, they showed all those clips from Diane Sawyer's interview with Matthew Perry, and I couldn't believe what kind of struggle he was going through with all this addiction and alcohol and pills and all the different stuff. So I'm making this video and hope that there's other people struggling with the same thing and want to let them know that there is hope out there. So that's why Matthew Perry actually made this book. And hopefully you're going to check out the book. It's on online on YouTube. You can check it out. What it's all about is helping people. And I've heard already five stories of people that read the book and checked into treatment. Well, since you know that that was his favorite place to go, we go into the next location, Pacific Palisades. That's where his house was. He just recently bought that not too long ago. He had it all renovated. That's the house where he passed away. And then we're gonna go to his final resting place at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood. Let's go. Driving on the beautiful Pacific Coast Highway towards Pacific Palisades. We have to make a right turn here at the Getty Villa. I've never made a right turn here. Been here thousands of times, but I've never been up here. It says Pacific View Estate. This is a super beautiful neighborhood around here. Going up the hill. Absolutely beautiful view. All the way down there is Catalina Island. And the day Matthew passed away, they blocked off the street right here with the yellow tape and they had a lot of paparazzi standing right here when his mom and his dad arrived they took a lot of pictures of them close up his house is all the way down here i think tmz is working together with law enforcement how do they otherwise know that something happened right here i was watching it live on tiktok somebody was streaming it live on tiktok and I saw his parents gotten here. I saw the coroner's office come in here. It's unbelievable how quick they know already that something happened. There's a sad picture you can see online where the coroner's office is picking it up. And Matthew 
is leaving his house for the last time. Right behind me, you see the house. Matthew Langford Perry passed away October 28, 2023. It's a really nice and quiet neighborhood here. This is the back entrance. There's a lot of cameras here. And you would think if somebody with his status of celebrity, they would have like a fence around it so nobody can actually get to his door. You can just walk over here and ring his doorbell. The day he passed away, his car was parked right here in the driveway. This is not the house where Diane Sawyers interviewed him. There's the entrance, really sad to see where he walked in and out every single day. People still leave flowers for him like a little makeshift shrine. It is so surreal to think that he's not here anymore. Just a few days ago, he walked in and out this place. He had many different places. This is one, he just had to fix it up for a while and he just recently moved in here. You can see some of the stuff is still under construction. This house was built in 1965 and it sold for six million dollars. But this is the one he just recently moved into. The other bigger house in Malibu he actually sold. He sold the $13 million house at the same time he bought the $6 million house. The day Matthew died, he played picketball. He was a really good tennis player, but picketball is something close to it. He played at the Rivera Country Club for two hours. And I think he felt a little tired. He wanted to go home early. When he came home, he told his assistant to run some errands. And he went into the jacuzzi and she's the one that found him when she came back running errands, him laying in the jacuzzi. I don't know if she pulled him out or if he just put the head out. But obviously when the police arrived and the paramedics, he was dead already. You can find a lot of pictures online how the house looks from the inside. Beautiful, beautiful view. Has a jacuzzi, a little pool next to it. It's just, it's really sad, 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 sad. He was definitely living the American dream, waking up every morning, looking at a beautiful view like this over the Pacific Ocean with a fireplace. Absolutely incredible. His fortune was about $120 million when he passed away. All this means nothing if you don't have your health. He passed away way too early and I'm just wondering who's gonna get his money. I think his parents are gonna inherit all his money but here we see money is not everything health is the number one and this is just my thinking since they have cameras everywhere they probably have cameras in the backyard too and they can look it up when he actually walked into the jacuzzi maybe they saw that he fell asleep or maybe they can find out what happened the corners office always puts up a tent when somebody passed away in this case for the paparazzi that they can't take any pictures Matthew is right underneath this tent. And the weird thing is a couple of days before he passed away, he posts on his Instagram this picture where he's sitting in the jacuzzi. They don't really know the original cause of death yet. On the death certificate, it says deferred. I'm not really sure what that means. They didn't find any illegal drugs. They just found like prescription drugs for COPD and anxiety. The sponsor that helped Matthew to stay clean and sober became business partner with Matthew. And he said that wasn't the best idea. He actually put $500,000 up his own money. He said at the end he lost the money and he also gave one of his houses as a sober living facility. At the end it didn't work out. He didn't do business with him anymore. But he said at least he helped some of his friends or people. This is what he saw when he left his house every morning. Off to the next location. Wow, look how young everybody looks in this picture here. I'm at the Warner Brothers Studios. 
which is actually not too far from the Hollywood Cemetery. This is gate number five. And there is the famous water tower. On stage 25 is that's where they filmed the TV show Friends. And then afterwards, after one season, I went to a uh, larger stage number 24 from 1994 to 2004. 10th season of Friends. This is the entrance to the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood. This little white chapel, it's called Church of the Hills. And it was right here where Matthew Perry's funeral service was held. There's pictures online from TMZ. I don't know if they were taken with the drone, but they're from way up here. And you can actually see the cast, the five remaining members walking into that little door here. Quiet, please. Service in progress. There's no cars around here. I don't think there's anything going on. I was here the other day. It was always closed. Still closed. Horse carriage. There's going to be a funeral soon. I've seen a lot of cars coming right here. Right next to the chapel, they have the little garden of prayers. It looks all nice and green. And this is right behind the Hollywood sign. See the antenna? That's where the Hollywood sign is. It is weird to think that just a few days ago, all the people from Friends walked into this little chapel here. In one picture, you see that the hearse was parked right here. And that's where they got the casket out. And moved it all the way up here. It was a pretty small funeral. About 25 people showed up. When you come straight in, you run right into Liberace's gravesite. Last time I was here is when Carrie Fisher got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I brought her some flowers. Looks like they still got some flowers here. There's a lot of celebrities here on that cemetery. David Carradine, Lemmy Killmaster. We got Stan Lauer, John Ritter, Paul Walker, and many more. I would never thought that I'd have to come here and see Matthew Perry's gravesite, final resting place. It's at the Sanctuary of Treasured Love. You walk in here, before we see his final resting place, I want to show you somebody else. I was here not too long ago. I liked him a lot too. Michael Clark Duncan, the Green Mile. The gentle giant. And then you make a left. And this is where Matthew Perry's final resting place is. Right here on the bottom. Hi, right, Matthew. There's people are visiting him already. It's just been a few days and of course there's no plaque on there yet. I'm just wondering if they're gonna put a picture on there. I might actually like the idea that there's a picture on there. I brought this little booklet here and it's hard to imagine that he's right there. What a smile. It says in the back of the booklet, when I die, I'd like friends to be listed behind helping people. I've been to many cemeteries and I'm looking at the gravesite and it's hard to imagine that, that he's behind this little wall there right now, inches from me in a casket laying there forever. 
and just thinking mom and dad losing her son, how bad that feeling is that the parents survive their own son, that they live longer than the son. And then the group of friends, when you do something special like this, you work together for 10 years, you've seen each other so many times, you become really close friends and you pass away. I think about that often too. When, when I go out with my friends, I'm thinking who's the first one of our friends to go? Somebody gotta go first, right? But he passed away way too young. I also wonder if this is airtight or if there's another lock place in front of it. He was afraid of dying, but he kept doing what he was doing because he could not find the way out. I've never met him. And I probably would never meet him when he's like in a group of people They have always security there. You can never get close to a person like this. But here in his story, I feel really sorry for him. In his book, he said he was 14 years old when he used alcohol for the first time and he was laying in the grass and he felt really good and he says, wow, that's how all the people feel all the time. And he kept drinking. By the time he was 18, he was so used to it, drinking every day. And it was in Lake Mead when they were shooting the movie Fools Rush In. They were on a jet ski, he hurt himself really bad. So the doctor gave him a Vicodin for the first time. And he's like, wow, he felt really, really good. He said, if I don't die the next day, I'm gonna try it again. So he ended up ordering 40 more. And then it got so bad that he ended up taking 55 Vicodins a day, he said, which is unbelievable. He used Oxycontin, Xanax, was drinking alcohol at the same time, and was smoking cigarettes. He said he almost died a few times before. And at one time, because of taking all those opiates, his colon was paralyzed and bursted. And he had to go to the hospital right away. The doctor told his parents that he only has a 2% chance of surviving. He was put in the coma and they put him on an ECMO machine. I think that's a machine that breathes for you. That same night, four other people got put on that machine. They all died. He was the only one surviving. And he said, how come everybody died and I survived? So there must have been a reason for that, he said. He had over 10,000 hours of AA meetings, 60 detox, 15 times to rehab. And then he spent over $7 million on all the costs for the hospital and for the rehab. At one time he was in Switzerland and they gave him a lot of pills all day long. He had to go back to the United States, but the doctor in America didn't want to give him the pills. So he had to take, next day he had to take a private jet back to Switzerland for $180,000. And I was just thinking, how do you come up with 55 Vicodins a day? He actually went out on Sundays in open houses in Los Angeles and looked through the people's medical cabinets and if he saw something he stole the pills and then he said uh, even if they would find out they don't think that Chandler would ever steal stuff from them you know so it's unbelievable he's worth 140 150 million dollars and now I'm sitting here right next to his gravesite. There's nothing you can take with you. Health is the most important thing you can have. Oftentimes you don't want to realize it. And he wrote the book to help people and hopefully some people will find help in this book. I could have just done a video real quick, go where you passed away, show the house, and then come here and show him the final resting place. But it impacted my life. He didn't impact my life before because of friends. He impacted my life because the struggle he had to go through. 
And I think about stuff like this all the time. And that's why I decided to do this video here. And I hope that somebody sees that video and sees how bad it can end up. It doesn't have to be like way. We still don't know exactly what happened, why he passed away, the circumstances, if there was some stuff involved. I don't know, but definitely too young. And it could have been prevented, you know. He had all the money, he had everything. And he ended up like this. Maybe it was just an accident, who knows. But maybe somebody learned something from this and Hopefully he can stop using drugs or alcohol or whatever problem it is. And I don't wanna say if you liked this video, if you thought that was a video, you kinda of liked it, yeah, give it a thumbs up, push notification bell, and subscribe to the German Venice. I'm glad I did the video. I'm gonna sit here a little bit longer and maybe I talked to him, I don't know yet. Anyway. See you guys later. I'm not gonna hit the camera right now. See you. Just saying. I just finished editing this video, but I wanted to say so many things. That's why I turned on the camera one more time. You know, when you think about it, he was dating Gwyneth Paltrow. He was uh, dating Julia Roberts. He had all those beautiful girls. He made videos, he made movies, he made TV shows had a big house, cars, he had the American dream. And still he was talking, something inside felt empty. And I don't understand what that emptiness is he had. How can you feel that emptiness? And this is what I'm really interested in. I want to talk to people that had the experience to be rich, famous and all that stuff. I just wonder how do people feel because you know, when you come here from a different country and you want to be a movie star, when I first came here, I was like, yeah, I can do it. I can, I wanted to know how it is to be famous, rich and all that stuff. Not so much anymore because now I know what is more important. Of course, I'm still would like to experience it just for the reason to experience it. A lot of people say, ah, I don't need this. I don't need this, but it would be nice. That's what I'm thinking. And I thought when you have all this, you should be pretty happy. And he wasn't. He wasn't. He could have done for the rest of his life. He would never have to work again and just live a good life. And that's why I don't understand. So many people that became famous end up dying, doing alcohol, drinking alcohol, doing drugs, doing all the bad stuff. And some survived. But... I don't know. I don't even know what I wanted to say here with this, what I just recorded. I just want to put this in the video because we all look for an answer. What is all this for? What is it all about? But having money, being able to do whatever you want to do, I think that is really important that you can make a decision what you're going to do tomorrow and you don't have to answer any question to anybody else. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, have a great day, have a great week, have a great weekend. Whatever you do, I hope you're happy. See you later.